Okay, so we were just like getting the collectibles here. And we're going to overthrow Lum. We are 19, so this will be our last chance to really do anything meaningful for our colony. And so far we have our dad, Instance, and Utopia on our side. So we just need... We need Seek, Seedent, and Rhett. And Auntie Seedent said that she'll be on our side so if we, we can get four people. So we just need Seek. I would say that we go for Rhett because we know he hates them. You know? But it's a deep, it's a deep part. I mean, either way, we just have to do either one. So you want us to try Seek first? Egg, barber fruit. That's a questionable Zeno egg. That's a questionable Squidleys. Hey, no, you get that flower. Then we get this barber fruit. At the very least, we can keep our favorite people here. So we got 100% with Tammy. Disappear after an explosion. How is it that we don't know how old he is? Do we even know the age of the others? We don't. She's 18. Oh. He's 20. Uh, we only have 85 with him. Damn it. Mars is at 96. She's 19. Along with us. Tammy is 20. Rex is 19. Well, Noni is 17. Well, Where is Tangent? Tangent's 18, so that means our boy is 18. Because those are twins. It looks like there's something important for us to deal with over there. Huh? That doesn't mean you want to do it or not. We'll come back to it after we make sure we got everything that we could possibly grab. Xeno egg. Because this. Oh, another Xeno egg. Busting bridges. Okay, that's everything. So, yeah, I'll go see what the hubbub is on that blurb. And then we'll head home. Then we'll go and deal with Seek. We've got a juvenile squeeger queen all on her lonesome. She's still mobile, but she's moving very slowly, digging around in the dirt here and there, licking the ground, possibly looking for a place to take root and live out the rest of her life. Uh, it might be opportunity to capture a living hive. Maybe you can convince it to take root in one of the barns in the colony giving the colony a source of honey while so much dangerous foraging. It spits acid if you get close, and they have a nasty, powerful beak. No wonder no one's managed to catch one. We can trick it, or we can just pick it up. Either way, it's easy. Should we try to trick it or pick it up? Get Bounce Weasel out. Plus three to the part to right to that, so that works. This is a helpful card, and this could get us up to 22 if we do babysitting echinacea. Plus two to, to cards with gems, so we keep him. Three, two. 
30 stress and we're only at 38 so we can actually take that hit So we should have just tricked it because it gave us plus 18 to stress. You call in a hover bike and hoist it up to the sled. The squeezer hive groans and squelches its sides. From all of its holes comes a fine mist of acid. It's noxious and awful, overloading your mask filter and making your eyes sting. It eats through one of your gloves and you have to rip it off quickly lest you lose some fingers. You're really wondering if this should be brought inside the colony, but you can almost taste the sweet honey that will be your reward. Once it's expelled the mist, it takes a few hours to recharge. And that's how you make it to a checkpoint. So that's the hive? That's a little weird, but okay. Your dad meets you at the gates to receive the queen. Your majesty? He bow he jokes bowing deeply. I'll make sure that she gets settled in, he says to you. Come by and visit her anytime you want. And now we can just go ahead and go home. And we'll go for seek next because we have until dust so this will be seek this would be seated to get a refresher and then ret and then we'll have a free month Ooh. mid quiet late quiet to our boy for his barber fruit did we give him a barber fruit last time Nope. So here's your bubble fruit. We are glad. And let's see. To mother. Give her. Tammy has Echinacea strapped to her back as she sweeps the courtyard, singing a happy song that doesn't match her expression. She stops and wipes, your brow, wipes her brow as she approaches and gives you a tired smile. So yeah, that baby's messing with you, huh? And then one for you, because we found out very late. In the game that you like these. Find it useful. You know what? We're gonna go hug Rex because it helps our stress go down. Really? And now he wants to talk. You follow the sounds of last laughter and find Nomi Nomi and Rex playing catch. Or maybe the word for the game they're playing is more like fetch. Nomi throws the ball as far as they can and Rex tears after it, climbing and leaping over anything in his way like it's not even there. A dog. Mm -hmm. Rex hands the ball back to Nomi and Nomi winds up to throw it again. But at the last second, they palm the ball and hide it under their arm. Rex barrels away from, from Nomi with his ground eating stride and gets pretty far away before he stops and looks around confused. He looks back at Nomi who waggles the ball at him and bursts out laughing. I hate this. <laughs> Nomi! He shouts running back to them. He picks them up and hauls them over his shoulder and Nomi shrieks with delight as Rex spins them around. Two Helio kids in their crisp uniforms pass by glaring archly at Nomi and Rex. Rex sets Nomi down and then spots you over Nomi's shoulder. But well, hey, it's Solana, he says. And Nomi turns around and gives you a stunningly bright smile. Rex slings his arm over Nomi and Nomi lays their head on Rex's shoulder. They're both breathless and beaming with happiness. Did I miss something? Are you two dating? Or what's the deal with your Helio friends? What's the deal with your Helio friends? The 
like the Empire State Building. Rex and Nomi look at each other and stick their tongue out their tongues. They're not our friends, Rex replies, shrugging. All they want to do is act like mindless little soldiers and measure each other's dicks. Yeah, he said that. Okay, right then. Here. I will not pay attention to you anymore. <laughs> he rolls his eyes. There's so many more fun things to do with. Nomi thumps Rex in the chest. Don't be gross, uh. they whine. Sorry, Nomi. Rex apologizes. I mean, we don't need anyone else. Ever since we were kids, it's been me and Nomi Nomi here. They're my best friend. I love them like my sibling. Nomi smiles shyly and hides their face. Rex is my best friend, too. Aw, buddy. Rex coos and wraps the his whole... The to smack you upside the head, though. <laughs> Rex wraps his whole body around Nomi's smaller one. He kisses them noisily on the cheek. Snuffing. Honestly, I'm just watching comedy. I'm just like, like, I feel like if I'm there, I'm just watching like, you will see this nonsense on comedy TV. And Nomi shrieks with laughter again. We were always the odd ones out on the heliopause, Rex says. People thought we were weird, you know? You probably don't see it because everyone is so awesome here. I but mean, they're silly, but they're not weird. Everybody but, has their own quirks. But compared to the rest of those smug, boring jerks, we really stick out. But I'd rather be different than be like them. He looks down at Nomi, who beams up at him. And I got to be different with my best friend, which was awesome. We just hung out together and had our own fun while everyone else trained to be proper little soldiers. Right, Nomi? Nomi frowns, like face of all his cronies, they say quietly. It wasn't all fun and games. Rex shushes Nomi and strokes his hand through their hair. I know, he says, but that's in the past. You don't have to grow up to be soldiers. We're here now, and there's so many more people to be friends with. He shoots you a smile, like Solana. Yeah, I'm a friend. But now I'm wondering, what did Base and his ass hats do to these two? Aw, plus two with both of them. Oh, nice. Rex smiles and holds his other arm out to you. Group hug! Rex gives really good hugs. And no, he's no slouch either. They're the hugging family. You might as well call yourself the hugging family. Wait. Oh, yeah. I got insomnia and I am heroic. And we are going to sashay with seat. Who are you and what happened to Bring the overseers. Oh, hell no. Uh-uh. No, but no. Okay, so the uh, work in the depot, I think. Depot, not depot. You've only seen these words written. Mm. Have you never been in a Home Depot? Oh, God. Home, I, don't, I don't pay attention to the words. Getting Chief Administrator Seek alone is fairly easy. No one wants to spend time around them if they don't have to. You explain that you're intending to hijack the elections at Virtual Malia in order to dispose of Governor Lum. The more you speak, the more it's clear that Seek is already on board. Yes. Finally, they say, rubbing their hands together with a look of unbridled glee. I was That's what I'm saying. She's a, uh, uh, they, they are a Sasquatch. I was waiting for everyone to realize what an imbecile he is. The, bar the man barely knows how to read. <laughs> so we can count on your vote? It depends, Seek replies. You're not the only person with ideas around here. I was planning on making a go at governor myself. Yeah, yeah, we're going to automatically leave the planet the minute you become governor. They extend their hand to you, rubbing two fingers together. Unless you can provide significant motivation to throw myself behind your cause instead. Really? Bribery. Former Governor Uticott pops her frail head out from behind one of those high back commander chairs. Obsequious? We're gonna ubiquitous? have ubiquitous? Not it's not ubiquitous. Ubiquitous obsequious? We'll have to find that one out too. Are you seriously intending to extort these young revolutionaries out of their candy money? Shame on you! <laughs> you got you got blessed by Grandma Yudi. She tis and turns back to her work. Almighty. 
She curses. What would happen to all of you without me keeping everyone honest? 89 years old and I'm still steering this ship. Damn. Seek has the dis decency to look ashamed. They sigh and drop their hand. Thanks, you God. <laughs> Thanks, Grandma. Well, Seek asks, for whom do you intend me to cast my vote? I mean, you don't have enough persuasion. Remember, they said you needed persuasion to become governor, and we have shit persuasion. Unless we have the one that does permanent eighty, or and we switch our gear, but I don't know. It better be good. If you don't get majority support, Lum will come down hard on those of us who show disloyalty. He may be an idiot, but he's an idiot in power. Me, of course, dumbass. Seek looks you up and down. Hmm. They sneer. Well, you clearly know how to get your way. Good luck then. When the time comes, I really want to know what those blue markings are on their face. Is that their augmentation, or is or that's just makeup? hair? Because that's their hair color. So you know why I just say they? Huh? I can't tell anymore. I just say they. Because women can grow hair. I mean, yes, but the thing is, like, but it. it and um, as the Sikh is and looks androgynous. Yeah, that's the whole point. That's why I say they, because I can't tell him. My, my eyes have been lying to me. Five, four, four. So the reason why I say that is because you know how um, curly fries yeah. has has the scales on her face. So I'm like, does uh, the Sikh have like an augmentation with that color scheme or something like that? It, you would think that the color scheme would be different from his you from their but usual it, color scheme. But the thing is, it doesn't have to be in a different color too. It can be the same color. But the thing is, when it comes to like certain, like getting traits from animals, you most likely are going to still get the trait from that animal and probably the coloration of that animal. While yes, Seek has no Seek does not have an aug augmentation. None of the adults do. Mm. The children do. Wait, so you're saying the, the, the generation of papa uh, it has no, no... I don't think they have augmentations at all. Mm. So, the, so the newer generation are the beginning that has augmentation on them? Yes. Mm. Because you would think, like, Instance would have had, like, some augmentations on, the, on her. Well, but no, again, she, has, like she has her hollow palm and like the little eye thing that's on the side of her head. So it's probably like they eventually got it to the point where they can manipulate the human genome like for the newer generation. Mm. Okay, so, they, so we're technically the, new, the wonder our hair looks like this. Yeah, the only... Right, every person's hair is like a certain standard color. It's just the newer generation has different color schemes. Yeah, mm. and Tam Tams wants to talk. Wait, does... Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Then then wouldn't that mean Lum's group is a traitor, too? Because Earth people don't have augmentation. They don't like this. Well, no. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm thinking is that once it got to the point that it would that it was marked as safe for humans, just like how vaccines and stuff have to be tested before you can send it out to the public. It has to actually go through clinical trials to make sure that it's safe and, like, the good outweighs the bad. So take, uh, just like talking about Anemone and her scales. Yeah, it basically makes her skin tougher, but it's also itchy. It's basically, a, in a way, a scar. She did say that every scar she gets is replaced with scales. Mm -hmm. And the scales annoy her, and they're, like, so so itchy. Did she have a cream for it? A what? No. Her mom gave her a cream for it. No, her mom didn't give her a cream. Her mom was just telling her not to scratch. Mm -hmm. And with that, especially with scales, things like most types of cloth can irritate that. So I only, I actually do know this because I've seen videos of like snakes slithering on different types of fabric. Mm -hmm. When it comes to things like silk or satin, they can't slide on it because it's just like a seamless glide on them. So it'd be like put they just like, perpetually in place. Yes, yeah, like in a way, just stuck like on the. Treadmill. So that means we're just technically bullying a snake if we put them on snake on I say snake on, on satin on, or silk. Yes. Yeah, so they would just stuck in one spot, keep wiggling. And then, I want to see that. I'm and then technically, our Chocho here was a bully to Dice as a child because yeah, just, her augmentation is shameless. shameless. Well, she really so she can't understand. In a way, she can't understand. Be mean. 
that it affects people when it doesn't even affect her. Yeah, she doesn't understand that. Yeah. She, she her words hurt because yeah. words never hurt her. Yeah. The only one that I that I would her. think doesn't really have that much of a problem is Cal because his. He's a big potato. No, his makes sure that he doesn't stink. Yeah, his is hot and cold temperature is mm-hmm. neutral. That's what I'm saying, but he's a big potato. Yeah. And then, of course, Tammy has the hearing. Oh, there you are, Solana. Tammy bounds over to you in a bright mood. Her daughter, Echinacea, in a sling on her bosom. Could you do me a big, big favor and come with me to the cafe? I need your opinion on the thing I'm baking. Hell yeah, if it's food, we're going. Wait, what? Wait, what? But here's the thing. My birthday was in quiet. Maybe an extra birthday party? Surprise, happy birthday, Solana. It's not your birthday, but as you walk into the cafeteria, all your friends jump out cheering. And you're here. I'm glad that you're here. We know what could happen to you. Please stay with us. They're wearing knit party hats, throwing streamers, and we blowing... Knew her, we, we knew her gift way too late. If we if we abused all the gifts on the people, maybe we would have found that she like eating... I thought I honestly thought she went the, the egg as a kickball. But she liked eating it. They're wearing knit party hats, throwing streamers, and blowing noisemakers. And you're pretty sure you can see a, a tiered display of cut cakes. Real ones, not soy cakes. Tammy skips towards you and throws her arms around you, squishing Echinacea in her sling between you. <laughs> Damn it. Mama! You sputter and say that it's not your birthday, but Tammy just laughs. I know it's not your birthday, silly, but you've been feeling under the weather, and I want to show you how much we all love you. Tammy, why are you too pure for this world? The others raise their glasses to you. They cheer happy birthday again, laughing at the joke. You can feel their love like a blanket wrapping around your shoulders. You're so special to us, Solana, Tammy says. Echinacea gurgles and let out a warning wink and Tammy bounces from side to side. I want you to enjoy yourself. Go ahead and mingle while I put the finishing touches on everything, okay? (laughs) Tammy gives you one last sunny smile as she bustles away. The sound of echinacea fussing and crying is audible over the murmur of conversation that erupts as the party begins in earnest. What do we do? Get an audience with Mars? Talk to Dad? Or find Tammy? Hi, my little gooseberry. Your dad greets you, giving you a warm hug. I know it's not really your birthday, but I think you're great every day, so why wait? Your dad puts his hands on your shoulders and gives you a serious look. I know things have been hard for you lately. I just want you to know that no matter what, your old man's here for you all the way. A wavery cry wobbles through the air, and you can see Tammy rocking from side to side as she tries to comfort Ex- Echinacea. What do you Mars. <laughs> yes, just continue to ignore her until we get the last point. Mars has set up court in the middle of the room, hollow screen in front of her, and a glass of wine in hand. As you approach, she touches palms to transfer her files with someone you recognize from command, who scares away into the crowd. Darling! Mars exclaims, standing up and no, freezing. No, she doesn't sound like that. She's like, darling, come over here. She's like, fucking slap you in the face. Depositing air kisses on both of your cheeks. She smells amazing. She'll be perfect in Paris. Happy birthday. It's marvelous what Tammy can do with a little determination, hmm? A little rustic. No, I couldn't no, ask no, for no, better. No. Mars pulls both hands on your shoulders and fixes you with a pitying look. Your lack of imagination is tragic, but we can talk about that another day. Mars lets you try a sip of her wine. You're not sure what earth wine tastes like, but you hope it's better than this. Mars laughs at your face as you bravely swallow it. It's an acquired taste. You spot Tammy passing a tray of food to someone so she can change echinacea. We're talking to Tammy. You leave the party behind, seeking out Tammy. When she sees you, she makes a shooing motion. No, no, she says, go enjoy your party. Echinacea squawks, pulling at Tammy's hair. She winces and patiently pries the baby's chubby, grasping hands from her hair. Seriously, goodness, don't waste your time here with me. We're big queens. Why are you going to stay with me? Nowhere I'd rather be than with you. Girl! 
Tim's expression goes soft. Oh, she says, that's so nice of you to say. There's nougat! Yes! There's a calico cat indeed. Yes, she is. And I am proud of her. You are gonna be just like her to cry. Tammy flags down Nougat, who's been running plates back and forth. Can't you please stay, play with Echinacea for a little bit? Solana and I are going to get some air. Echinacea gurgles happily as Nougat takes her, and Tammy turns to you. So, your child just hates you. <laughs> All of a sudden, you give her to Nougat, and your baby is like, yes, son of a bitch, I'm in. It's probably the wavelengths. It's just, they're like, hmm. Chaos. I, yeah. <laughs> So then when she notices the mother energy, she's like, mm, I want to bully my mother. Because I have the right to bully my mother. Tammy turns to you. Okay, I'm all yours, Solana. You and Tammy slip out to the side of the cafe and set off towards the garden. Tammy seems grateful for the break. She chats animatedly about the plans to build a new creche. Now that the second wave of colonists are beginning to realize the benefits of raising children communally instead of saddling whoever birthed them with all the responsibility. I hope that means Echinacea will have lots of other creech sibs soon. Just like we did, Tammy says with a wistful smile. I just want her to be happy like we were. You both look over at the walls and the threat of danger they represent. Tammy does a comment on her use of the past tense, and you let it sit in the air between you. Not awkward, just accepting. It's quiet in the garden at this time of day. Everyone's either at the party or watching some rest or catching some rest while the suns are at their highest. A garden bot hops on by spin on a spindly bird legs. You and Tammy are alone. Even in the silence, Tammy senses you might have something to say. What's on your mind, Solana? I'm lucky to have you as a friend. You have been like the sweetest one to us no matter what. Tammy's gentle laughter fills the air. She slips her arm in yours and rests her head against you. I'm the one who's lucky, Solana. I don't know why you chose to be my friend, but I'm so grateful. You and Tammy enjoy a few more minutes together in the garden, cloud watching and talking about whatever crosses your mind. Tammy's simple thankfulness is infectious, from her excitement over a new flower to her steadfast love for you shining through every word. You can feel your heart unburden itself with each step. I heard that snort. I was choking. You can feel your heart unburden itself with each step, dropping your troubles like stones to mark where you've been. Okay, so now we can have Tammy in our main menu. Oh, it's nice. And minus 100 stress. Oh, Just right. sitting with Tammy. This is why you need to back Tammy. Eventually, it's time to head back to the party. There's cupcakes and to eat after And we got our insomnia all. off. Yep. Oh, and Tammy's Care 3. Double the card that's next to it. So we could get a plus 16 on somebody. Yeah, we still need to delete uh, spa cards. Tammy takes Echinacea back from Nougat, but before you can rejoin the party, Tammy stops you with a hand on your arm. Wait, I have a present for you too. Yeah, you can see her, her kitty tail now. You protest that Tammy's already done enough, but Tammy's hearing none of it as she presses a book into your hands. The title reads, A Hundred Reasons Why I Love You. Aww. The book is filled cover to cover with memories, fond officer observations good lady she's choking. and even look where's your drink yeah i demand you take a sip because you're choking on your own words yeah like that's gonna help me stop choking on my words i mean drink and help lubricate your mouth don't say that <laughs> moisten your mouth that's even worse wet your mouth stop juice your mouth even little sketches all in tammy's loving hand there's more than 100, she says, shyly tugging on her ear. I wrote the title first, but then I couldn't stop writing. You don't know what to say. Tammy is simply the best. The rest of the party goes off without a hitch. Even a little Echinacea is well-behaved now, letting Tammy light the cupcake. The chaos energy worked. As you blow out your candles and everyone cheers, your only wish is to be able to feel like this forever, surrounded by love and support. Yep. 
Tammy, you are just too awesome. All right, so we can help in the kitchen since we don't really need to relax in the lounge and we can hang out with Auntie Cedar. Aunt Anne is waiting for you in the kitchen. When you arrive, there's a strange new smell in the air. What have you done, woman? Tammy is staying the furthest she possibly can from the stoves. This woman's done something wrong. Her hands bunched up in her apron. She catches your eye and shakes her head, looking distraught. Ah, you're here, Anne says. I want to tell you something before you get started today. She gestures over to the stove where an enormous yellow pot of stew is boiling cheerfully. As you know, the colony has found was founded on vegetarian principles, she says. Raising animals for their meat on Earth was, well, it wasn't very nice and it took up a lot of Earth resources. Soil and water and feed that we couldn't bring with us on a spaceship. You nod. There are animals on the ranch that produce milk or syrup or high protein berries, but you've never cooked meat. Well, Anne continues, humans have been eating animals for a lot longer than we've been farming them. We used to hunt animals for food and for their furs. Well, I think that was our food, first food source before we started growing the vegetables. Sometimes the ranchers have to slaughter an animal, and well, some Must of Must you choose such a harsh word? Sometimes we have to put the animal to sleep so we can eat. That's a better word. No, it's slaughter. Because if you put down a human, it's manslaughter. No, I'm not saying it. I'm, I'm not saying it like that's a bad choice of word. I'm we talking are about like, be nice. Be, be, be more nice. This is Tammy. Tammy's 20 damn years old. She already, she shoved a human. Because God doesn't understand sex. <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure she don't want to pay attention to that. She wants happy things. I, know, I understand. I love her, and I understand of her wanting her happy thoughts. Her husband, for Pete's sake, is an is a animal farmer. I understand that, but it, you, sometimes you have to kill something to eat it. And as heartbreaking as that is, I do understand why vegans don't want that to happen. But here, but you can't always get your way. I've seen a deer eat a snake before. No, I, no, no, no. I'm, uh, no, I have no problem with it. I'm just saying, instead of saying the word, a harsh word like slaughter, just say you made them sleep. It's people like you that that causes books to be censored. No, I do. I don't care if you say slaughter to somebody else. If you say it, if you say it to a freaking uh, 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 curly fries face, I don't give a damn. But it's Tammy we're talking about. Tammy Her. should understand what slaughter is, though. Tammy can't take it anymore. They've been bringing back dead animals, Solana, she exclaims, horrified. Auntie wants us to cook and serve them in the canteen. Well, yeah. How else are you going to eat? You need your protein. And soybeans is, can only do so much because we can't really break down the cell walls of food, which is why we get cellulite in our thighs and body because it's just a buildup of that stuff. And, and you don't want crepe paper thighs, Tammy. Rape, paper, thighs. Have have you not messed with crepe paper? Crepe or crepe? As in, I'm thinking crepe, of crepe, not crate. Crepe. Huh. No, so food. No. That's what I was thinking. Crepe. I'm like, why is she talking about food now? Oh. I'm moving on because I I get stupider every time you ask <laughs> you me. You say crepe. Question. I'm like, we're talking about. Um, did I automatically talk? No, you it's sell a crepes. No, it's an arts and crafts thing. Oh, I thought you were talking about food. Do you want my fries or something? No. I'm trying to try with my munchies. You're satisfied with your food? Yeah. Okay. So then we just think you said crepe and all like, like oh, Nutella crepe would sound nice right now. Yes, they would, but that's not the kind of crepe I'm talking about. I can't believe you've never experienced crepe paper. Anne holds up her hands, warding off your concerns. I know you might find this idea uncomfortable. I want you to remember that this is no different than what would happen to them in the wild. Most animals are eaten by other animals. Meat is healthy and good for us, she adds, and we need to take advantage of every possible food source. That means, of course, we're not going to waste any part of the animal. Even the bones can be boiled to make stock. Yeah, and you can also use them to make glue. 
Tammy turns a little pale at the thought and sets her hand on her shoulder. Ask him grow his for a tutorial on butchering and preparing an animal and follow her instructions. I think Tommy it needs to be pay, cooked pay, at Tammy a certain pay, temperature pay. to make sure it's safe to eat. What's Tammy's full name? Aspartame. Oh, right, right, right. Sugar. Yeah, 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 I remember. Uh, I've already started this stew to save you some time, she says. While it's simmering, you can start on learning what you need to know for tomorrow. But that she kisses you on the forehead and bustles out of the room. Tammy looks nervously. This is wrong, she says quietly. Like always, Anne has left you to manage things in the kitchen without her help. What can you do with this power? Negotiate a vegetarian, but we already got that card. Becoming a carnivore, got that card, and sabotaging, and that's a minus two. I mean, negotiate for vegetarian options to make Tammy happy. I mean, like we will have both meat and vegetarian options. Yeah. Because then you would just be straight up forcing to eat only meat, no matter like. You holla Auntie Anne in the creche and tell her you're not serving the stew unless there's a vegetarian option. It's not right to force other people in the colony to eat meat if they're uncomfortable with the idea. Okay. She smiles broadly. Of course, Sunshine, that's a wonderful idea. Why don't you get started on the other stew right now and make sure both pots are well labeled so everyone can make their own choice. I'm pretty sure Vases and, and, and Curly Fries will be all like, let me take that kid. You make a lot of work for yourself, but you're sure it was the right thing to do. Tammy helps out by making nice labels while you chop up the ingredients for the vegetable stew. They turn out really nice. Thanks for sticking up for me, Solana, she says, while she colors. I'm glad there will be something for me to eat. Why are you coloring? Let Tammy be Tammy. I understand letting Tammy be Tammy, but I'm sitting here cooking on it, and you're sitting there doodling. You asked I'm, for this vegetarian I'm, option. I'm pretty some sure, freaking vegetables. I mean, I'm pretty sure she's going to make the most beautiful labels for the pots. Meat vegetarian. And she's the oldest of all of us. Meatiest or vegetarian on a? What the fuck are you talking about? Vegetarian a. And meatiest. Evelyn, you make me worry. So nothing really changed there. So we can go ahead and just give you your bobber. Because you won't eat a Xeno egg. And we're going to have to come over here anyway. Give you your Xeno egg. So we can do defense training so we can talk direct. Okay. And that'd be everybody except for Steven. You meet with Security Chief Rhett. Knowing he'll be a tough sell on this whole political coup business, he sits behind his desk, hands clasped, listening intently as you explain how you and Mars plan to dispose of one during the next Bertramalia. When you're done, he shakes his head and sits back. You're not an idiot, Solana. You know what you're asking me to do. Having the garrison on your side will make this a military coup, he tells you. If you learned Earth history, you know those aren't a good look. Why should I support you? It'll be peaceful. I could make a better governor than Lum, or Mars is the future of the colony. Blank, blank, blank. <laughs> we're, trying to, we're trying to sell him on this. Like, what... He's asking, why should he support us trying to overthrow Lum? Uh, just be bold. Because remember that time when we um, saved uh, uh, Papa Sheep? Yeah. And then we, when we were bold, and he was like, hmm, I like your boldness. Okay, you so make be a careful. better governor than Lum? Mm -hmm. I like your boldness, but I like you. But Ooh, you it's going to be a hard one. Good thing we are de-stressed. Red laughs. You're a regular little politician. Wait, what's the on first the... one? You know me, Red. Let's see. 
Oh, I was, I was thinking he was going to show me. No, nope. so it's just like, no, you can't do it. Because we haven't been in the garrison enough. Okay, You're a regular little politician on the campaign trail, aren't you? You've got a lot of guts asking me to remove a professional soldier from a leadership. And you know very well he's a piece of shit. During a time of war to replace him with a child. Why the hell shouldn't I go tell Governor Lum right now that there's a mutiny underfoot? Well, I feel like I want to slap him in the face and say, you Lum screwed up and you know it. Will Tris try to convince him? Oh, uh, uh, can we switch gears? How? No, isn't, uh, was it the carnival or something? No, or something. Was it? No, yeah, gear. Switch your gear. Can't you take gear? Okay. Uh, the worst the persuasion. Uh, well, like, Plus perfect. five to persuasion. No, it's plus 20. We're switching the cool jacket. But it's not, this is not telling us what we could do. This it's a persuasion challenge. Okay, okay, fine. So what do we take off? We can take off the class cutter and put the cool jacket back on. Yeah. Can't change. <gasps> no! I think because I have a feeling the higher your persuasion, the less the, the, the bonus, th like, let's like say if it's Either 90. way, let's try. It's Maybe. a level 99. What the fuck? Oh, yeah, we forgot about this card. Uh, and a bonus to yellows. Oh. How about this? Because that turns it to a 38. Because yeah. plus 10, this is the only brain card. Yeah. And then these three are going to kind of help us out. So I drop that down to 61. Okay. So if we do this, three, four, five, on other cards, so I can hold on to that, technically. So that'll jump this to a 27. That's fine. So we got 34 left. And you're good to go. This is a good card. Yep. So base value five, so nine, six. And it doesn't matter where he sat because we still have that bonus. So that plus 12 saved us in that only loop. You managed to somehow convince Security Chief Red that it's normally, it's morally imperative that he support your movement to dispose Lum. You both know that Lum is a dangerously inept, so it's really just a matter of assuring him that you'll do a better job and that you'll protect him from reprisal if you fail. You've won his vote against all odds. Hey, yeah, plus one in combat. Okay. Okay. I think we should just go ahead and do a de stress because we know what's going to happen next. I mean, we already got 100 minus 100, remember? But we still have 21. But I'm talking about. Because Virtual Malia is next. Okay, throw away a card. No, mostly because Virtual Malia is next. We're about to do a freaking coup. You think that motherfucker's gonna come go down while the fight? I'm pretty sure he's just gonna be barking, that's it. No, I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to do a hard thing against him. Hence why you should throw away, go to the spot and throw your cards out. Aunt Anne's boat. Aunt Anne is where you expect her to be, reading a hollow novel in the creche while the babies are napping. Hello, Solana. She says, looking up, how are you doing? Anne, can we talk? Of course, dear heart, she says, closing her hollow novel. Do you have the number of votes you need to form a majority? I have five. You're the last one, bitch. Oh, look at you, Anne says fondly. You're really serious, aren't you? How wonderful to see you all grown up. Somewhere in the creche, a baby starts to cry. Anne stands up and excuses herself. You'll have my vote, dear heart, she says. You can count on your Auntie Anne, just like always. Now we're gonna just relax in the lounge so we can come in with zero. And, um... 
you organize a raid on the kitchen pantry for snacks. They want to be free. You must liberate them. Just do a relax on the garrison and then deal with virtual Malia. Sounds good? I'm just. Well, Xeno Egg. I'm just curious if our yeah, idiot yeah. will ever come back. I mean, uh, his favorite place is the. What were the, rage, the ridges location? The Westing Ridges. Yeah, that's the one Should we go and check the Westing Ridges? Might as well. Because remember when we were laying on that rock? True. And he's like, ah, this is my favorite place, and blah, blah, blah. All right, let's go see if we can find our idiot. Uh, Western Resting Ridges. Uh, so we have to go to the furthest point again. And I'm trying not to hit any of this shit. Oh, look, Crystal for Mars. Know me, know me. But we only found one so far. I mean, it, the, the, didn't the prompt say the, the, it reset? The land reset? Well, yeah, the land usually does reset. Squids, thank you. Get your butt here. No, because I couldn't see down. Oh, you want to talk. What's up? You're trekking through the wilderness when something catches your eye. To anyone else, it would simply be a weird depression between two roots. But it pings something in your memory. Isn't this what the entrance of the Overseer's Cave looks like? You decide to check it out. Your hunch is correct. The depression opens up into a passageway just big enough to wriggle your body through. Then widens into a reveal a familiar door. You quietly push it open. The room you enter is not unlike the one where you interface with the array. There is a vat in the corner emitting a soft organic glow and another computer panel slowly being reclaimed by the rock wall. It's not hard to assume the planet is lousy with rooms just like this one where Sim and the other gardeners can rest and respawn if needed. However, this one's not empty. You enter to find Sim, who, aptly so, as naked as the day he was born. He is stepping out of the regeneration vat clad in only strands of bioluminescent glue, goo, that slice down glue. his- Well, concerned that this dude is naked, I would rather have it sticking on his body so I can't see. But they said, but they said it's iridescent or bioluminescent or bluelescent, the bullet wolf. AKA, it glows in a way that I can't tell what it is. It transparent. Sims, back is to you, treating you to a glimpse of skin usually hidden under layers of tattered fabric. The knobs of his spine and shoulder blades are visible under his inhuman musculature. He looks unusually delicate. Is that English? Mostly. He reaches up and gently wrings out his thick hair, humming a song you recognize from the Hollow Archives. As if sensing the weight of your gaze on his body, he pauses and turns his head. Solana, he says softly, I didn't see you come in. Since we came, you know you want to. I actually wasn't wanting to. I was going to press sorry to bother you. If this was me, I was like, oh, sorry, sorry. I, I didn't know you were. Bye. You're naked. Click the first button then. He looks down at himself. Yes, he says, unashamed by his nudity. I just regenerated. Now that you know the truth about the gardeners, Sim continues, we can be far more free with our words. He gestures to the regeneration vat. I have very few secrets from you now. You can come take a closer look if you like. After a beat, he clarifies. A closer look at the vat, I mean. You don't want to fuck his body. His weird, weird alien constructed body. You walk over and check out the vat. The his air weird, weird uh, alien constructed. Isn't he bio organic? 
the air gets noticeably warmer and close as the closer you get. Like sunlight on your face, there's a giant, there's a faint organic smell that's not unpleasant. The vet itself looks like something you find in engineering, but seems to be constructed entirely out of natural materials. Spongy looking fungal growths, mineral deposits, and pulsing vein-like umbilicals. You can touch it, Sim says. It's not dangerous. You sit on the lip of the vat and run your fingertips across the surface of the glowing liquid. A slight electric charge prickles up your forearms and you can feel the friction of a link to the array. Sim sits down beside you, now fully dressed. His fingers alight on the surface of the liquid as well, and you feel a slight presence at the edge of your mind, like a thought you can't reach. I'm glad we can talk freely now, he says. Is there anything you wish to know about me or the gardeners? Dying and being reborn, what's that like? Tell me more about the gardeners. How old are you? Excuse me, how old are you? That question has many answers, Sim replies with a slight smile. This consciousness has ultimately been in existence for over 20,000 years, since the creation of the gardeners. But that means very little. I certainly don't have uh, 20,000 years experience as a bipedal anthropomorphic or Bipedal? Bipedal or bipedal. I thought you were about to stop me on anthropomorphic. When you say bipedal, it sounded so wrong. I'm like, bipedal? Bipedal or bipedal. We are bipedal. Bipedal, two legs. Quadrupeds are four legs. And this body, he says, gesturing to himself, why, it's only minutes old. Dying and being reborn, what is it like? Reborn isn't the right word. Sim answers. It's more like reopening a program after a system crash. Everything's still there, perfectly preserved, except for whatever I added since the last time I saved my work. Functionally, it feels more like teleportation. As for dying, Sim continues, frowning a little as he considers the thought. Well, I'm certain that dying can be extremely painful. Depends on the death, I assume. He clutches his chest. I have no memory of the moment of death, though I have died many, many times, he says. In that, we are the same. Tell me more about the gardeners. Sim sighs. Compared to the gardeners, humanity is short-sighted. You're often unable to conceptualize present or future beyond your own lives or those of your direct descendants. Gardeners think on a much larger scale. I once spent 400 years as a mush tree, just to avoid talking to a gardener whose methods I disagreed with. That motherfucker literally said, I don't like you, fuck you, I'm gonna be a tree. <laughs> ah. He smiles, juvenile, I know, but when your memory spans tens of thousands of years, 400 years is trivial. And it's basically a nap to them. And it has given me a true appreciation for all life. One that goes deeper than I can describe. When I tell you the gardeners are Vertruma, I mean it quite literally. How many gardeners are there? Thousands. He thinks for a few seconds. It's hard to say, he answers. We are theoretically an infinite number of instances of the software that comprises a gardener. It's not uncommon for a particular instance, such as myself, to go dormant, possibly for thousands of years. He stretches his fingers and looks at them, then at you. And many gardeners, such as the overseer, find they do not need to take physical form at all. There are only a handful of myself, of like myself who do. You like being a gardener? Does the wind like being wind? Sim answers. I'm sorry to be cryptic after I told you I would not, but there really is no other way to answer that question. I am what I was created to be, he continues. There's a beauty in that and a clarity of purpose that makes me feel fulfilled. I do not experience existential angst like a human does. Now, I feel bad for naming the file for this existential crisis because he's basically saying he doesn't feel the existential crisis. What should we humans uh, do? 
If I knew the answer, I would tell you, Sim replies, placing his hand on top of yours. Pragmatically, I do agree with the other gardeners, he continues. If our purpose is to protect the biosphere of Vertruma and humanity poses a threat to that, then by the letter of our own design, humanity must be eradicated. However, he sighs and looks away. I love humanity. I think you are all in an incredible species and it would be a shame to destroy you. I feel like doing so would be a violation of the spirit of the convergent domains. Why are you sounding like a religious leader? Stop preaching your state and speech bubble. And perhaps, he murmurs, redeeming you will be the greatest act of love we could perform in the name of our imperfect You creators. still sound like a preacher. All right, yeah, thanks. That's enough. Some nods. Please know that you can come to me at any time and I'll do my best to answer. However, I must ap apologize for something, Sim says abruptly. Yeah, got you. Mm. Yeah. At your questioning look, he blushes and turns his head away. This body is new, he murmurs. All of its senses are heightened. And confess I find myself. Why is that a speech bubble? <laughs> I was not even paying attention. I was like, mm, man, I've done you. And, and, and I see that speech. I'm like, oh, hell no. I'm not here. I find myself. I ignore you. I wouldn't like to touch another why I'm vulnerable to this. I have to now. I am. <laughs> hey, our boyfriend ain't here. And let's be honest. If our boyfriend was, he'd do the same thing. Okay, Sim looks delight and reaches out and pets your hair, running his fingers through the fine strands. Marvelous, he says. Truly a texture I have not been able to replicate in my own bodies. He runs his thumb. And he has that smuggy puppy face look. That won't be able to put you in the face. He runs his thumb over your eyebrows, then your cheekbone. His fingers dance around the bridge of your nose, then lightly to the tip of your philtrum. Across your lips. The fuck is that? Mm. And pause at your chin. Sim's gaze drops to your mouth as his own lips part with an unspoken question. Why do you talk like this? I'm sorry, I'm I can't. I'm dating someone. Thank you. Sim's eyes narrow in thought. Yes, that is a concern for certain humans, isn't it? He and he murmurs. still has that smoke face. I was not aware you felt the same. My apologies. He stands and takes a deep breath. I would like to go outside, he announces. Have you ever swam in the lake nearby? It's incredible, especially when my senses are heightened. I love the feel of the sun and water on my skin. So you, the, so, so you like feeling the earth. Oh, well, no, it's not earth. You, you are like welcome feeling, to join me if you like. You, feel, you want to feel the part of nature affecting your body. Just had to double check. Sniff. Now we have enough for Nomi and Mars. We're still on the lookout for what's the call, man? Yes, we're still looking for our idiot. If only we had enough power to stop him from being a terrorist. Oh, we both knew he was going to be a terrorist long before he started that shit. I said I smell a disturbance in the force. Okay, there's. Oh, that's far so we can get to the tangent. And let's. Keep Going through the resting, resting widgers. So this should be around the spot where we'll be able to see him if he's here. I would think he might be here because because this is his favorite place to go to. True. But he doesn't. But if he doesn't want to be found, he will not be found. Remember. But remember, in, in the dream, we saw a vision of where he would be. So probably this. Well, let's go look down first. First, I was getting that flower. Because next, the next event is going to be, like, really bad for us. You see smoke on the horizon. Concerned it would be the start of a wildfire, you trek over to check it out. When you get to the origin of the smoke, you find something unexpected. What Motherfucker. I <laughs> Did I what I tell you? At you from his campfire. He's roasting a small creature on the spit. 
It hasn't been that long since you last saw him, but he looks more rugged somehow, completely at ease. So we haven't seen him in one, two, three, four, five, six months. It's been six months. I mean, technically, it would not be six months if we went to look at it for him the minute he left. True. So it's on us for not looking for him. Honestly, he deserves to be alone for a little bit. He's made a small but tidy camp here. He must have brought lots with him when he ran away. He stares at you in silence for a few seconds as if gauging your attentions before he rises to his feet. Solana, he says, warmly taking you in his arms. He looks deep into your eyes. I'm glad you made it. Hold on, goddamn second. Really? You want me to do it? You asshole. No, don't do it. Because... <laughs> go, ahead. go ahead, do your rant. My manager loves it when you rant anyway, so go ahead. I understand. We sent a disturbance in the force from the year we've been meeting you and understanding your brain follicles. <laughs> and then we like, mm. I was like, mm. why do I send this a disturbance in the force? Right? This, uh, he might become a terrorist. And then I'm just like, mm. I smell bullshit. And then it happened. And then it was like, oh, it's technically on our part for not being able to stop him when we, when we made it. Or we, you made me feel guilty for murdering Sam when it was actually a plot. And then I was like. We sacrificed Sim to be with you when it was fucking plot. But then when it comes to the bomb moment, we just couldn't even stop you when we just got you. And then you fly away with your little wimpy legs. He <clears throat> doesn't have wimpy legs. You fly away with your flim flam legs and into your land of sun and weird alien nonsense. Toss a bomb in the place where our peepaws and family, I said family, uh, well technically they are a family, the friends are, and then you're like, hello, we see you after how many goddamn ones, you're like, hello my love, I'm like, bitch, what the fuck are you supposed to do with your name, get, get me a come over here so I can make some sense of you. Should we just say if he's okay? Yes. Alright. Sure. Your brain follicles are, don't make sense to me. Sure. You gave me 18 years of stress to obtain you. And this is what I get in return. I get 18 years of stress to obtain you. Oh, I shouldn't speak pain and pain. That's the wrong one. We took 18 years of stress to learn your English that we can only learn. You're confusing yourself <laughs> at this point. I feel like we only learned 32% of his brain. Can I continue? My brain fart! <laughs> ah, I don't understand this boy at all. Oh, come into my house. Uh, bitch, you just blew up our goddamn house with our dad in there. And you literally walked up to us and said, I'm sorry for your loss when your Mima died. But you're okay with bombing the place with our peepaws in there too? Oh, uh, you know, I, I don't understand this boy's brain. Okay. Sure, sure. He replies with a si smile. I know how to live off the land. Ah, Solana is here. You hear from behind you. Hey, he's cheating on us at the same time! To find Sim watching you from the cover of the forest, he steps into the glow of the campfire, tall and ethereal in his tattered human clothing. You can tell them the truth now, he says. What's done is done. What's going on? It's happening. Dice says, like I said, the gardeners are going to make me one of them the same way they can. Are we already going to lose you to the Ooblets and Ghoul Man? We can't even see you anymore. Put the, oh, let me out. The same Wasted 18 years. <laughs> Bro, I'm salty. I'm sorry. We literally wasted 18 years. And then you're telling me I'm going to become a Goo Man. Okay, remember. All you're doing this is, all I'm thinking of is that scene from Swan Princess. All he cares of is life. Wasted! 18 years of understanding your weird ass brain follicles! And you're telling me I'm gonna become a goo man. Yeah. Okay, the same way that they can download... I can't even poke your face! 
<laughs> oh, I'm so mad right now. I'm sorry. You blew up the fucking house. I mean, I understand our colony is whack as hell the minute the Helios, no, they're called Helios, right? Yeah, the Helios. Yes, the minute the Helios nonsense came into existence, well, except the, the exception of Rex and, and Nomi. We're against people, but they're still love them, though. Oh, well, we need a Rex in our lives so we can under, so we can get some weird ass shit going on. But the minute the abomination calling Lum himself existed, I already had hatred in him. So I was up for you for uh, 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 being angry at the colony. But you could have at least assassinated if you wanted to blow up the colony. I said colony. If you wanted to blow up, blow up the colony, there was no need to blow it up. All you had to do was assassinate Lum and everybody would have been happy. But no, son. I want to blow it up. I think we should have went for a sister. Tangent's even worse! But we... Tangent would have blown up anything! Didn't we just talk to, uh, whatchamacallit, doctor lady, and she said she was scared because she, she was making some sort of creation that Lum, Lum was forcing her to do? Cause, or if if we do not... Over, no, over... Instance ha basically has to play doctor when she wanted to play, like, engineer. So she's being forced to do that while yeah, no say... one was... Because, like, the whole point was, like, one of the kids was supposed to grow up and learn how to do the doctor stuff. And that congruence was supposed to help with the doctor stuff. But everybody kept getting hurt, so she had to start doing the doctor stuff. She no, no, is no, an I, engineer. I she wanted to go do engineering, just like how no, does I, robotics. No, I know that. But I'm so, I remember a key point when we read one of the proms. She said that when we were trying to get a vote from her, she said something like, you're doing so, you do realize what you're doing, right? And then, like, we had to convince her, and she said something that Lum was forcing her to do something extremely dangerous. We don't know what it was, but she was forced to do something extremely dangerous. Okay, is, so if you could stop the ramp for a little bit so we can go ahead and go to the whole overthrowing Lum, we could find out what's going on. Because she said if we, she, because she said if we do not, if you do not I make it, she's going to die. Right? The same way they can download copies of their brains into physical bodies, they can do it in reverse. They're going to make me part of the array. Being around Sim, it makes me realize why I've been missing, he continues. You know, like the old Earth fairy tales about changelings? Like, I never fit in with- All I hear is that you're abandoning me after 18 years of waste. And eventually I realized I never really fit in being a human either. Not being afraid of death and pain like everyone else. Not every other living thing. It changed who I am. What what I am. Who am I? Where I should, am I? I should tell you this wasn't what my... What am I doing? Somebody save me. Oh! <laughs> if you slide on the floor, I'm going to kick you. <laughs> so much work wasted. What happened to my cute idiot that was like, I'm a man. <laughs> Give me back the idiot, bro. I don't need him have a damn man. That's my bullshit. Now I feel like, well, what would happen if we saved him from the bomb? He would have just ran away. I'm yeah. pretty sure he would have just kept going. Really? I think so. Well, we'll never know unless we did a second one. And six and I should tell you this wasn't my idea, Sim adds. Not this nor the bombing. I am truly sorry for what DICE was made to do to your colony and the tragedy that followed. This should never have been allowed. Nobody made me do it, DICE insists. Mm -hmm. Not to lessen, and the other gardeners made me a deal. Blow up the colony during the next attack, and they would let me become a gardener. So this is was so this wasn't a deal with Sim and... Uh, no, he... Not to lessen that. We're looking mother yeah, I know, I know that. So I, I was thinking that... I was like, there's, because oh, because he said when he when we spoke to Dice, he said like, oh, we had a deal to when when he was about to escape that night. Uh -huh. He's like, oh, he had a deal to either blow up the place or uh, 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 blow up the place or, and become a gardener. Yeah. So so I was like, who who told him such a deal? So I'm thinking it's either the overseer or I'm like, I know. No, because he told us that not 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 to lessen gave him the option <laughs> when we had caught him with the bomb. He told us who it was. Really? Yes. Well, I was like, I was thinking so many other theories that I didn't pay attention to on one keyword. I'm not sorry I did it. Dice continued, turning away. If you came here to bring me back, <laughs> forget it. Like Sim said, what's done is done. I'm not going back. My future is with the gardeners, he says. 
they need me. They want me. I can bring them a human perspective, you so, know? For all humans suck. We're pretty good at finding new ways of doing things. I can teach them how to change things and make them better. With that, Dice returns to the campfire. Sin nods at you, then joins Dice. Who are you? Where am I? I demand restart. What bullshit I'm reading here? Should we talk to Sim first or talk to Dice first? Poke his eyes out. Let me understand what the fuck is on your brain. I need to screw your brain open to understand what the fuck I'm looking at. What am I witnessing? <laughs> Jesus. Ah! This is going to be over an hour and a half. I can just tell. So should we talk to Sim first or talk to Dice first? I said poke his eyes out so we don't understand what the fuck Fine, Dice, is. okay. Dice gestures for you to sit next to him. I'm really glad you found me out here, he says, taking your hand. I know. I know I did. It's hard to accept, but he cups your face in his hand. Don't you see? Humanity is doomed here. I only made the end come a little quicker. Dice sur searches your face. Wait, why are you looking at me like that? I think we did not save him. No shit! We need him to hold on the LACD! What is done is done. He had already made up his mind. That's why I was saying, like... So I'm going to become a lunatic. <laughs> like, we under we knew that Dice is strange. Yeah. But it, uh, I feel like he needed a therapist. And we were technically the therapist that he needed. But that one last critical point dunk goofed everything. Also, it's one in the morning, so you need to be careful with how loud you're yelling. <sighs> I wasn't expecting it to be. Because you need to come home, because you can't, because I'm going to miss you, or let me talk to Sim. I will sit there and say, let me talk to Sim, and that will leave his little ass confused as hell. So so what should we do? Should we go ahead and talk to Sim, or should we say something to him? Because either way... I just want to understand what's with your brain. Like, like... What yeah, happens, because just... I feel like the concept of us liking you is not computing in his brain. Because he doesn't understand that we're worried for him. He doesn't so care. So what happens if we say, we, I miss you then? Because I'm just trying to be... You wanna, do you want me to click it? I kind of want your your point too, but I, but I want to... You, you're, I want to know what's your EQ. What's your EQ, right? It's EQ, IQ, EQ. IQ. No, there's two. There's uh, apparently there's Intelli two. Intelli like the. Um, yeah, IQ and EQ. So IQ is the rationality, and logical the side. The intelligence and the emotional. And then and then EQ is the more the more emotional side. Okay, so which one should we pick? That <laughs> gonna miss him. This hurts you so bad. <laughs> you know what? I'm just gonna click miss. Okay. I'm gonna miss you too. Dice mumbles, poking the fire. You're probably the only person I'm going to miss. I don't feel. Sam clears his throat. Well, technically, he says, Dice will become a part of the planet itself, as I am. You are part of the ecosystem, and therefore everything you are will be within Dice's domain. He smiles, and when your physical form fails you and you return to all that you took from the planet, you'll be together forever. I will burn this fucking planet down. So there's only one anyway. problem. Uh, the process uh, hasn't been done in a thousands of years. We're going to need some raw materials to repair the interface. Are you kidding me? Dice we have says. to help you? I've done everything you guys asked me to do, and now I gotta do more. I want to push you. They'll never find your body. You'll be a part of the ground forever like you wanted. <laughs> Dice, I mean, Sim looks apologetic. Well, it is better I tell you this now rather than you having to find out mid-upload. When your body has already been processed into a liquefied slurry of proteins and waste matter, correct? Dice makes a face and Sim continues. It is metamorphosis, little one. It's not pretty. Regardless... Well, need three convergent domain power sources, three crystal clusters, um, and three to clear... Ah, three... I cannot read! So we need strains, items, and crystals. Yeah, we need more. two more of these. You know what? We're gonna ooze you. I'll get them as soon as I can. 
All right, let's keep exploring. Get you two more things. One more thing. All right, we have enough. We're gonna put our dumb ass into the ooze and piss in it. I would intentionally fuck up your thing. Because all of this, all of this because you didn't fit in. Join the military like most kids do. I think the military is the one thing that's not as good. It's, he's going to become a second base, but worse. Evelyn, I literally watched a YouTuber talk about his time in the military. You want to know how they got his ass to join? Or, hey, man, you want to be just like Batman? And he signed up. Oh, my fucking God. Yeah, so they got his ass by saying Batman there you want a bomb join us utopia is giving you clearance to poke around the ruins of the secret valley stars this place is neat the buildings are arranged in a spiral formation around a central point they're made out of a slick oh, that oil slick obsidian something that looks like petrified bone and half parts missing where some organic material has long since rotted away da 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 uh, what is it? Check out the pyramids. Wait. Can we at least hit the... Yeah, glide back, follow trees, investigate other buildings. Okay, smaller deteriorated pyramid buildings down around this valley, purposes unknown, dozens of them. Like the door in Dice, you approach one random station at the edge of Valley. Like the door in Dice's monitoring station, you know what to do. Uh, yeah, very creepy. Bravely walk inside. Because I am so pissed at this boy. So fucking pissed. You hurt your voice that bad, huh? So that doesn't matter. We're still going to get 50 stress. Well, 20 stress is fine. Because I am so sick of this boy. So sick of him! Walk in, the iris closes, the floor lurches, Even and you run down in the elevator. Down. The elevator squeals and grinds like it hasn't been used in literally thousands of years. It doesn't go far, then grinds to a halt where the iris opens, reveals the large room with obsidian walls. We know what this is. <sighs> Touch stuff at random. Yeah, yeah. Cease to be yourself. Sticks and consoles. Yeah, yeah. Muse on the same wormhole observatory. Where are you doing a wormhole observatory array console five, you nosy little creature? Thrown backwards out of the array must have been an explosion in your hands. Are singed, the blown out did, of dead. Did the evil computer man just, just slapped us out? Yeah. Okay, so like, so I can't do the thing yet? What? Cause the, the the you're talking about the, uh, his requirements. Yeah, I can. I got the stuff, but like the the exclamation point is covered by all well, the exclamation points no longer here. So do I have to go all the way over to no, Sim? No, you have to speak to Sim to give him the object. Uh, so, so technically, you just wasted a prompt. Very much so, wasted a prompt. 
But now we know this is wormhole Ray's area, mm. so we could have figured out what the fuck's wrong with us. Mm. Calling me a nosy little creature. You're the nosy little creature, you bastard. The ornery bastard. Can you have a thumbnail for your final roll of distress? Uh huh. That's minus five. But. Uh, I demand the power. I brought you something. Oh no, it's not in. God, God damn it. Nope. I thought it was the shit that he was looking for. Uh, yeah, that means we, uh, so we're going to have to wait till another time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to return to the colony, do the stupid Virtue Malia thing, and that's where we'll end this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Governor Lum enters the colony square with his customary bombastic fanfare. Brass band, red carpet, banners with the Heliopause logo snapping in the hot dust breeze. It's disgusting. The governor gets to his usual his usual tithe of applause and from the diehard soldiers but it's obvious how tired and fearful everyone's become in service to his war you catch mars's eye and she nods in solidarity you've planned for this for so long and now it's your time to strike while well, everyone is watching if you can get the entire council to speak out against Lum today maybe the rest of the colony is ready for a change anyone is better than Lum, even a teenager the governor raises his hands for silence through though it is largely unnecessary. Pioneers of Vertruma, he begins. We stand here today not shivering and quaking in fear, but with our hands around the neck. He makes a wriggling gesture of the planet itself. Before he can continue, Mars leaps on from her seat and runs to the stage. A ripple of fear goes through the crowd. You remember what happened to Utopia last year? It doesn't have to be like this, she cries, speaking to the crowd. You don't have to listen to him. He's just a bully with a gun. Like the ones we left behind on Earth. All right, we're going on to. You put yourself between her and Lum's honor guard. She flashes you a giddy, grateful smile and turns back to the crowd. She points to the governor. This man has made you think the only way to survive is through violence, she says. He's just a soldier and not even a good one. Violence only makes small, weak men feel proud oh shit Mars she turns to the council he's not powerful we're powerful we broke free of earth we broke free of war and bigotry and inequality and we can break free of him too please she urges stand with me reject Lum and bring in the new era a colony led by someone born among the stars she's holds her hand to her chest. Me, I can lead this colony. So can I. Oh, come on. I knew it. So what I'm saying, I was saying that that, that that gear shit will help. Yeah, actually, yeah, both of ours. Yeah, because like it only gave us five, so. Because cause that, that, uh, um, that jacket could have given us a plus 80. But we need a hundred. We're currently at 50, the, what, what's our current thing? 55. So then with the plus 80, what about when 100? No, the gear gave us a plus 10. Oh, so we oh, will oh, only oh, been oh, at 90. Oh, oh, no. So. Plus 20 on top of that? Yeah. Oh. We wouldn't have done it. Oh. She grabs her elbow and hisses. So, Lana, what are you doing? I love you like a sibling, but do you really think the council will support you? You have to let me win this one. Fine. Yeah, vote for her. The buzz of the crowd is deafening, like a swarm of bugs all chirping together. Some of the council members are nodding, but it isn't unanimous. This is bullshit, Lum laughs. Two children saying they can lead the colony? What's the first order of business? Taco Tuesday? Sweet, sweet, for Hell dinner? yeah, I'm doing a Taco Tuesday. He waves his hand dismissively. Have your stupid vote, he sneers. We'll let the council decide. Out of the corner of your eye, you can see the guards with their weapons lowered, just waiting. Some of them look as interested in the change in leadership as you are. If you have the council behind you, even Lum supporters in the military will fall in line. You might just win. The council stands to deliberate amongst themselves, and one person, one other person, Uticot, plus one council. The former governor is unsteady on her feet. She looks at you and Mars, then nods. You see her exchanging words with the council. The council deliberates. You and Mars clasp hands and tensely wait for their decisions. They shuffle to the side and deliberate. To your relief, they come to a decision quickly. 
we must all be unanimous or the centrist of the colony won't rise against the lump. After a minute, Instance looks up from the group and shouts, someone get that man off the stage. I'm not gonna die, so yeah. Lum starts to laugh, but stops when he realizes that his own honor guard is coming up to the stage to cart him away. Well, wait, he says. His arms are being held behind his back and Shut taken off stage. You, you can't do this to me. I am the governor. I am the leader of this godforsaken colony. We can toss these in a freaking plants. You search the crowd for any hint of dissent. The then soldiers are in... We insult the plants. The plants will probably spit you out. But everyone else just looks tired and relieved. You can't believe that's all it took was a few kids to point out the obvious. The council returns to their positions and instance remains standing. I told you they were just going to be barking. Well, we've decided to reward these young patriots on their bravery by accepting their bid for leadership, she says to the crowd. On a trial basis, she gives you a meaningful look. We're pleased to, rec to recognize our new governor, Mars. Mars shrieks and jumps up and down and gives you a big hug. We did it, she squeals. We really did it. Thank you, Solana. Mars releases you and waves at the crowd as they cheer her name. She looks overwhelmed, but bursting with happiness. Seeks shuffles forward and directs Mars to place her hand on her chest and repeat after them. And you watch the swearing in ceremony. Mars swears on her honor to act with the best interests of the colony and to uphold the tenets of Vertruma. Peace, understanding, and harmony with the planet and each other. Not just for herself, but for the generations to come after. It's official now. Lum is old news, and you won. The two factions of the colony regard each other carefully. On one side, those who went along with Lum out of fear, either of him or Vertruma, are cautious, unsure of what to do now that their leader's been disposed. On the other, the peaceful faction can't quite believe their nightmare is over. Mars sees this and directs Lum's military band to start playing something festive. I know we've been through a lot, but we've been through worse, she said. Tonight, let's just enjoy being together again. Let's eat, dance, and celebrate. After the pot licking is over, the crowd adjourns to the feast tables and eventually the dance floor. The sun sets on the long day and the heat breaks and the party continues well into the night. After the festivities, Mars gives everyone two whole weeks of much-needed rest. She spends the time meeting with every colonist individually and does a lot to endear her to the people who are still hesitant about having a teenager as a governor. All right, go abuse Mars so we can uh, uh, talk about this, not, not a, the, the, the deal between the overseer and the shit, man. We'll have to do that next time. Because this is already an hour and a half long. Because so your rant you... took, like, most of that time. Okay, so that means you got two videos. Nope. This... Okay. You want me to continue on? I mean, just... You're, 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 you're... Like, this could just be a longer video. Okay. Yeah, so we'll stop here. And go ahead and save the existential crisis. So, yeah. We'll come back next time for this, and I'm I'm gonna definitely let my manager know about your rants, because that's Did her you favorite tell her part. About the 